everybody. Welcome to Vicious RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and behind us is the 301 RK Rockwood, previously known as the 2622 RK. Um, I, I think Rockwood and Flagstaff are merging and homogenizing their model numbers. And I think they began it here with their fifth wheels, kind of like they already did with their GeoPro E-Pros, just to kind of make the crossover comparison for everybody a little simpler. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This RV is barely over 30 foot and has just a stellar kitchen. The amount of storage and counter and prep space in this thing is fantastic. You can get to the refrigerator, the bedroom, the bathroom, use that stuff. Uh, when you're in transit, you never have to open the slide. So if you're doing like an overnight stealth mode uh, camping trip, this thing is awesome. Especially when you factor in, it has a, uh, a factory equipped 1800 watt inverter. So like if you do need to do like a, a Walmart overnight uh, stay over trip, you got to run like a CPAP machine, you want some coffee in the morning, run a coffee maker. You can do all that here without having to go to Starbucks to get a $19 cup of vanilla, whatever the crap they're selling nowadays. I, I don't know. Um, I'm sure it's delicious. I'm just not a coffee person. It gives me whiskey shivers the moment it hits my lips. Blah. Anyway, uh, we've got 200 watts of factory standard solar. You're seeing today you can slap on a second panel. Uh, they're uh, rolling out their fifth wheel power package across a lot of their fifth wheels now. So if you want like that extended, extended mooch dock capability, that's happening. A uh, big Goodyear Endurance uh, radials on this with TPMS. Um, generally speaking, going to be carpetless and ventless in the floor wherever they can get away with, from it. And overall, I think this is a stellar like couples traveler, but it still gives you a lot of good destination space and function when you get there. However, the seating, I, I sort of personally feel the seating was flip-flopped. And as we go through this, I kind of like to hear from you because that's something I personally feel like uh, I, I'd rather, I, I'd like to kind of get that feedback back to Rockwood. Like this is just one person's opinion. But if you all start chiming in, they tend to listen. This is always like, it always impresses me every time I get in this model. You know, if I walk in the door and I turn my head left or if I'm coming down the stairs, this is what you see right here. And like the window coverage, all of the cabinet space. It's just super, super impressive. Everything that they've packed into this sucker. It, it's just, it's a big hoss is what it is. And you've got this monster counter space. I've, I've yet to really talk to anybody who seriously meant the phrase, I, I want to get rid of my RV because it has too much storage and too much counter space. I don't think I'm ever going to see that. One thing to kind of maybe proactively head this off at the pass, though, um, some folks dislike when there's a level change on the countertop like that. The reason that it has to be there in this case is their solid surface countertop supplier uh, can't make one piece that size. So they did have to have something somewhere. And if they tried to leave it one level, there'd be like a weird seam in it somewhere. And they kind of wanted it to, well, <laughs> seam a little more uh, done with intent and clarity. Now I'm seeing some manufacturers do things like have this pull out drawer right here and like a couple removable chairs to kind of create a desk space right there. And now that I've seen it, I, I never thought about that until just now when it just shot out of my mouth. Now that I've seen it from some other brands, I, I kind of wish it was here. And I, I think that overall it would provide a nice enhance. I don't think it would, I don't think it would hurt the RV at all. I think it would only kind of help it. Now let's go ahead and rip this band-aid off. As it currently sets in this factory configuration, you've got a dinette straight across from a very high mounted TV over here. So let's just kind of be, you know, totally clear and fair and genuine about that. Uh, Grand Design's version of this has kind of a little flip-flop situation where their sofa and their dinette is kind of swapped in terms of position. And uh, as a result, you know, you can have a theater seat across from, albeit a high-mounted TV, still straight across from the TV. Uh, what if Rockwood did something like that? Or do you prefer the arrangement that we're looking at here today? And there's no wrong answers to that question. It's just kind of the one that works a little bit better for you. Um, you might notice um, uh, the, there, there's like a... Um, an arch-shaped gap above the cabinetry right there. So what's happening here is I'm not using some tricky fisheye wide-angle lens, like my head's its normal weird shape right now, this goofy nugget that you're looking at here. Sorry for the glare off the forehead, by the way. Um, and if I got some weird red spots, you're going to see that a, uh, a hand crane pecks me in the face later in the video. It doesn't make sense now, it will. Um, they're using a barreled ceiling. They're not contouring the cabinetry to match that because the cabinet's already tall enough. I don't know what purpose it would serve, but it creates an opportunity. If you look up here, 
it's not just flat topped. And I got to get you at a weird angle on this, I know. But you can see how there is a very aggressive little lip on that. And what that allows for is like, if you want to do a little bit of decorating, I think something that would look really cool up there, if there was some kind of like indirect rope lighting, I'm kind of a sucker for that. Although I'm not a big fan of like the lightsaber Labatt blue lights that are in a lot of RVs. That's a trend. I'd be okay if it died out of the RV industry. What about you? I don't know. Maybe some people like the blue lights. Um, Up top here in the kitchen, you got that big rain-sensing Max Air style like vent fan, complete with roof vent cover. You'll find another one of those in the bathroom. That's a cool little rock staff doing rock staff things feature right there. They only use the big fans. Now you see uh, the refrigerator is not as deep as the slide. Good news, they didn't waste it. It's actually outside storage, which is cool. Um, more on that in just a second, but you're going to see several uh, outlets in the RV. If you go through and visit it in person, it says inverter circuit on that tiny little sticker that you can't read the print right there. It's telling us that that is wired to the now 1800 watt factory inverter. So the base inversion on this 1800 watts uh, to quite a few outlets, not every single household outlet in the RV, but to quite a few of them. And it can provide some pretty serious function, uh, you know, in terms of factory standard inversion for something that's not necessarily like, hey, we're trying to get you off grid. But like if you're doing a, a travel stop, which in a 30 foot fifth wheel, I could see that happening. 30 foot fifth wheels are fantastic for traveling, especially when you factor in how they're doing their um, their, their suspension and you got the Goodyear tires and the tire pressure monitoring. Like that's, that's a thing I could really see right there. Um, I, I should have pointed this out when we were sitting down, but like awesome window coverage on this. They're short windows though. When you're standing up, it doesn't look as impressive, but when you're sitting down, it gives you an awesome view. But when you're standing up, it's still unobstructed enough that I can see what's going on in my campsite. So personally, I think it's pretty darn functional and pretty darn effective. But again, that's just my nerdy take on the thing. There are some USB plugs kind of tucked in here. So this makes a neat little charging pocket right there. Um, what's kind of cool about that is that's located right above your uh, sleeper sofa. So if you do have some kind of guest, you know, like if you invite Uncle Josh over for the weekend, I got a spot I can keep my little phone charged up there in case, you know, he tried to abduct me uh, and turned out to be a couple gas station murder hobos. But no, uh, never mind that. Anyway, let's open up all the storage, take a look around here. Um, the, uh, the RV, the one thing that I do think is interesting about this, it doesn't actually have one object I can point to and say, that's the pantry. Like, it doesn't have a traditional vertical pantry. But I would also argue with all of the cabinet space and everything this thing has everywhere, I don't know that I need a specific object called a pantry. I love that it has like the wastebasket space integrated into it. A really big oven in these as well. If you are a campsite cook, you want to spend some extended time, you know, doing some work in one of these, it provides a nice big space there. And there are three pop-up power towers all around that kitchen. They are not doing uh, power outlets under the overhead uh, cabinets of the RV. Everything is down where you can reach it. But by doing three of them, it gives you more ability to kind of customize where you want to place uh, your appliances and how you want to set up your kitchen. Because your kitchen might look different from my kitchen. And if I don't want one of those power towers near me, I can you know, recess it back into the countertop and then it just becomes a wireless phone charge pad, which is cool. Or you can just not use it at all. Nothing says you got to use it at all. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um, let me ask you this. They are doing their little, um, uh, they call it We RV, but the, the LCI one control panel over here is what it truly is. Uh, they just get to put their own name on it. This is neat because it still just gives you switches for like lights and things like that, which is nice. And it gives us switches for slides and awnings. You can Bluetooth to it. Is that wireless Bluetooth functionality, like, is that important to you? Is that a make or break factor? What if it just wasn't there? What if it just had physical switch panels? Like, um, Alliance does a lot of that. Alliance doesn't do a lot of Bluetoothy stuff. They just do switches and... I think it's fine, personally. Magnet holdback for that um, bathroom door, or bedroom door, by the way. The bathroom door is a sliding privacy door before I 
uh, end up talking about that incorrectly once again. Um, this bathroom is a, a bedroom bathroom kind of shared arrangement that they use in several of their units. Giving you a look at the linen storage over there, it's actually part of the slide out. You can see how deep it goes versus the sidewall. I've also kind of got the closet open to help you complete that visual. This is one of the only areas in the RV uh, where you will find a heat vent in the floor. The upper deck actually has two of them, but they did a, as good of a job as I think they could really trying to put them in like non-primary, non-walkable spaces. Um, it's just the, the most direct route where they had the ability to do it. Great space around the toilet. That is something that I really like. And um, these radius corner showers, I will tell you, one of the things you really got to do with these is, uh, you know, if you're going to soap up your scalp, you really need to turn to face toward the corner uh, or the actual radius of that shower to have enough elbow room to, to do what you want to do in that thing. Otherwise, you're going to be banging against the doors. Um, as a bigger person, that's just something I've sort of noticed over the years. Shower miser, water saver, if you are going to be off grid a little bit. And up here in the uh, you know signature fifth wheel series, they do have that height adjust shower hardware, which is really nice if you're a little bit bigger like me and a little bit not as big as me like uh, the, the, the Mrs. The Nerd. Um, never called her that. Don't think she'd appreciate that, actually. <laughs> Once again, though, big vent fans, factory standard. No need to update, no need to upgrade. That's kind of a cool thing with Rockwood. You know, they're never the least expensive. And if you just go, well, somebody else builds that layout for less money. Yes, they do. Yeah, but they don't have all of these things is basically the best way that I can describe it for you. That is a true queen bed which is nice, and it means you can swap out any mattress that's a true queen, obviously, that you want to. It, uh, these do not have any sort of Olympic queen or king options or anything like that, so that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. There's things they do and things they don't do. By the way, your, your second air conditioner, um, uh, this is the thermistor over here. That's what kind of uh, controls it, and you do have just a physical switch here for the bedroom light. So if you don't want to have to Bluetooth everything or clickety-clack every single light off and on, well, you don't gotta. Um, by the way, those blackout roller shades that you saw kind of peeking down a little bit in the living room, they persist up here in the bedroom too. Giving you a look under the bed, you can see how that's an all-welded aluminum cage. That's something that they, uh, they, they do in these just as a matter of happenstance, basically. Uh, anything that's going to be structural or load-bearing, they, uh, they tend to do that. Now, looking up here at the corner, that TV seems like it's in a weird spot. Like, if it's swung out, it's in your way. If it's not swung out, uh, well, then it's hard to watch. But the reason they do that is because uh, the, the wall across from you is a sliding pocket door. And you can't exactly mount a TV on something like that. Now, I have kicked my shoes off because I it grinds my gears when I see people doing videos like this, wearing their shoes on someone else's furniture. It's so flippin' disrespectful. What I wanted to show you here is how you can still use the bed in road mode from your point of view. Because even when that slide is closed, I can still use the bed unimpeded. Although, if uh, you roll around thrash around at night, uh, you're going to want to make sure you don't put your foot through that uh, mirror. Now, I've never attempted a, a road mode point of view like this before because I don't know if you've noticed from my toilet selfie body type, uh, I haven't exactly been doing my crunches uh, lately. The, uh, the closest I've done to that is I've been um, eating crunchy Cheetos, which um, I do prefer crunchy Cheetos, but if you put puffy Cheetos in front of me, I ain't, I ain't turning my nose up. I ain't too proud. I eat some puffy Cheetos. <laughs> I eat some puffy Cheetos right now. Anyway, sorry. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, refrigerator, all this stuff accessible, functional in transit. And despite the basically 30 foot size of this one, when people hear 30 feet, their half ton towable alarms start going crazy. Folks are really looking for like, hey, can I half ton that sucker? Probably not. And the reason I say that, if, you're, if you watch a bunch of my videos, you already know it's the hitch weight of this RV plus cargo plus you and your vehicle is probably going to overload the payload rating on half tons. And so that you know, um, slapping airbags on your pickup doesn't actually change the payload rating. You're not actually protecting your bearings, your drivetrain. You are forcing the RV level, which is not a bad idea, 
but you're not actually fixing the mechanical uh, you know, aspect that is lacking on your pickup. So three quarter and up is generally going to be my recommendation. Uh, that pin box, by default, it just fix point forward like everybody, but it is a turning point hitch. So there is this little thing you can disengage and allow that hitch to pivot and turn, um, which uh, if you've got a, a shorty short bed kind of vehicle, uh, it can you know help you keep the uh, cab of the RV from playing bumper cars uh, <laughs> with the cab of your truck, as it were, the cap of the RV, uh, sorry. So this includes its little side stand, the little griddle and all that here. You're going to see another one set up in the back and you're like, wait a minute, does it come with two? No, it doesn't. The one that's on display back here is just that. Um, it is just a display unit. So it comes with one griddle. Now they're using a quad step to get in and out of here. So the steps are, uh, you know, not quite so tall for everybody. And it is gas strut assisted. So it's not real heavy and hard to lift. They're also swapping over to that uh, safety handle there from Moride, which is something I like. Because it folds down vertically and it doesn't fold over the door, if there's an unmonitored individual, typically of the teenage variety, running around the campground, uh, who folds your entry door handle over your door at night, you're going to have to break the thing to get out of your RV. Well, now you don't got to worry about it. Behind the fireplace, there was a pocket. And typical rock staff action, they don't waste nothing. They, they, they're, they're very good about it, that. Uh, regular viewer, Mr. Aaron Thor. That's one of his hot button items. Uh, like mine, I'm not a big fan of outside speakers. One of his is, uh, you know, he, he hates wasted storage potential. And I don't disagree with him. I'm not saying he's wrong for that. Uh, I just think that that's something he would appreciate. Uh, Goodyear tires, once again, TPMS standard on here, but just to let you know where your spare tire is located, your underbelly is enclosed, obviously. Uh, there's also a radiant barrier running through there and up the nose cap. Um, the RV also has holding tank heat pads standard. Rockwood's been doing that, jeez, for what, over a dozen years? I don't know. They've been doing that uh, for a long, long time, way before it became cool. I really love, though, they started that awning all the way at the back wall and shoved it all the way forward as far as they could, threaded the needle between the propane door and the baggage door to really provide us some maximized uh, function there. Receiver hitch on the back, 300 pound rated. Where that can be handy is obviously like bike racks or something like that, but what if you've got like, you wanna get away from people. <laughs> I, I respect it, first of all. Secondly, um, if you're gonna spend some serious time off grid, and especially like you wanna run air conditioners, if you wanna run things like air and furnace a lot off grid, Solar is not the solution. You still really want to look at a generator. Having the ability to put a small generator tray in the back could be real handy. Now this might be a bit of a bummer for some folks, but you've got your bathroom uh, black and gray outlets in the front. You do have a kitchen gray only back here. Now it is technically under the slide, so you want to get your hose probably hooked up uh, before you open the slide and everything. You can reach the pole handle at least uh, by not climbing under it. You don't have to do the crawl of shame. Um, cause this area, like if you're in a park where there's sewer hookups, that's the last place I want to be crawling around the ground. I don't know about you. And similar to that little pocket behind the fireplace, this little pocket's behind the refrigerator. The one to our left is behind the dinette. Again, they just don't waste stuff. Now this door, like this pocket actually goes up to pretty much the ceiling of the slide. But if they tried to make the door super duper tall, well, you'd never reach it. So. Instead, what we have is what I call endoscopy storage, where, uh, you know, it looks like you have to shove a camera uh, up in there to see the whole thing. Now, remember, there's like, uh, you know, drawers for the dinette ends, but the back section here, you could tear apart the whole dinette to get to it, but you don't have to. And you might notice that is all welded aluminum framed. Um, underneath your bed's the same thing. Anything Rockstaff builds in-house that is going to be load-bearing, it's got a welded aluminum cage structure. The whole RV is that way. The bed, the dinette are the same. And what they've done here with this baggage door hardware, I'm very happy with this. So this is a friction hinge mechanism so that if it's just sitting here on a windy day, it doesn't like smack you. I mean, I have to get super friendly with it. You see, it still didn't even engage that. Now, if you push it by hand, it moves very, very easily. But it's kind of cool uh, because, you know, if, if, if the door tried to flip up, you'd have to have one of those cheap 
long plastic holdbacks, which are just notorious for breaking because you're under a closet slide. That setup to me, man, it just makes sense. And for these kind of dollars, it better make sense. Thank you.